Hey Prabhakar, what are these people doing? Sam, this is a rally. Through this rally, people of our country are protesting against corruption. Well, if they're not happy with the system, then why don't they form a party, contest election and change the system? These groups do not directly take part in politics, but they influence the governmental policies by showing their protest through peaceful means. But Prabhakar, democracy involves variety of interests. For example, urbanization of the rural areas may be good for development, but it shouldn't be at the cost of the livelihood of the rural people. In the democracy, the conflicts and differences between various stratas of society need to be expressed in an organized way. The struggle for conflicting interests shape the democracy and makes it more realizable and effective. Therefore, voicing of conflicting interest is a very important feature of a successful democracy. So, this means that uh, democracy evolves through popular struggles. But who organizes these struggles? There are various kinds of struggles like uh, movements, pressure groups and interest groups. These struggles are carried out by organized groups of people who have similar kinds of interest such as interest of community, religion and profession, region and so on. All these groups try to influence the government policies. Oh, all these forms of struggles are very confusing. Can you uh, clarify their meanings? Yeah, sure. Why not? Nepal's struggle for democracy is a good example of a movement. A movement is a long-term process which depends on the spontaneous mass participation and involves more than one issue. The Nepal movement aimed the restoration of democracy, which involved various issues such as elections, rights, constitution and so on. Oh great! Can you tell me more about this movement? Certainly. Nepal is one of the third world countries which attained democracy in 1990. The third world countries are those countries which have changed democratic governments from monarchy, authoritarian or colonial rule after 1974. The king remained the nominal head of the country while the real powers were exercised by the elected representatives. King Birendra, who had accepted this transition, was killed in 2001. King Gyanendra was made the new king of Nepal who rejected these ideals of democracy and in 2005 dismissed the prime minister which was followed by the dissolution of the parliament. The movement of 2006 aimed at regaining democracy from the king. Oh, how did Nepal restore its democracy? The seven-party alliance, which was formed by the major political parties, called for a four-day strike in Kathmandu. This protest turned into an indefinite strike, which was joined by various other organizations. In 2006, the king was forced to concede to all the demands. Girija Prasad Koirala was chosen as the Prime Minister in Transitional Government. Wow! The struggle of the Nepalis must have created vibrations all over the world. What about interest groups and pressure groups, Prabhakar? Hmm, this is a difficult question, Sam. Although interest groups and pressure groups are not same, but their differences are not very sharp. However, the difference between the two is based on the tactics adopted by them. Whereas pressure groups uses the tactics of rallies, publicity through media, strikes, ghirao and so on. An interest group has a particular interest involved and once the interest is taken care, the group disappears. Also, their pressure tactics are different which varies from situation to situation. Remember, all pressure groups are interest groups, but all interest groups are not pressure groups. Oh, I see. That means lobbyists in America are pressure groups. They sit in the corridor of the offices, blocking the passage until their demands are considered. Right. This reminds me of a struggle that comes under a category of interest groups. Oh, yeah. You mean the struggle which took place in my country, Bolivia, right? 
The struggle was called Water War. It was a struggle against the privatization of water. The World Bank had pressurized the government of Bolivia to give up its control of municipal water supply. The government gave the contract to an MNC for supplying water to Cochabamba city. This resulted in rise of water prices and caused the people to protest. How did the people show their discontentment? An alliance of labor, human rights and community leaders had organized a four-day strike. After which the government agreed to negotiate. Was the issue resolved after the strike? No, the government did not keep their promises. This led to another strike, which was then followed by the cancellation of the contract with the MNC. And the water supply was restored to the municipality at old rates. Very interesting. This means that although the struggle was made by an interest group, yet the strategy adopted was that of pressure groups. Yes, Prabhakar. Do you think there are further classifications of struggles? Of course, Sam. There are sectional and public interest groups. Interest groups that address to the interest of particular section of society are known as sectional interest groups. For example, trade unions, students unions, teachers unions, etc. Public interest groups, on the other hand, are those groups that promote collective good rather than selective good. They aim to help and benefit other groups. The members of these groups may not be the part of the affected body. For example, Pedicor and Role of Human Rights Organization in Nepal. The principal concerns of these public interest groups are with the social justice and equality for whole society and not just one section. However, these public interest groups are also called pressure groups. This makes the presence of such expressions very valuable for an effective democracy, where the interests of all individuals are voiced and heard. Now I think you will be able to relate with different kinds of democratic struggles in countries across the world.